Welcome to PartialArc.com. Don't do that. You find yourself in a tavern. Yo, we should have checked for traps. I knew he forgot something. I think I can reason with him. You killed his father. Can I have sex with it? You could certainly try. I'm going to touch the sword. Don't touch the sword. The child is evil, right? Obviously. I could cast fireball. Always cast fireball. All right. Roll for it. Welcome to Friday Night Quests. I'm your host, Jay Jones, and normally I'm your dungeon master. However, this week, Mike Christensen will be stepping into the role as we bring you another installment of The Adventures of Gormo. Longtime listeners of the show will remember Gormo as the dwarf manservant to Prince Horace Kemp, but he hasn't been seen in a few seasons. So now that the Velvet League has survived another Bahamutmus, we thought it was time to check in with Gormo and see what he's up to. And we have a few returning special guests joining him. So without further ado, let's get to the game. All right, everybody, let's meet our players. First up, playing Gormo, we have Jay Jones. Hey, everybody. Tell us a little bit about Gormo. Gormo, he is the dwarf manservant, or was the dwarf manservant, to Horace Kemp. It has been quite a long time since we've seen Gormo, and it's because Horace vanished from yeah. the world. He went Absconded into the... Absconded into the Underdark. He went into... Well, first he went into the Feywild for about two that's, years. That's what I meant. And then, yeah, and then even, Blackrock and then even Underdark. Even before that, I don't think Gormo's seen Horace since before Sweeney first he's always, died. I always see him as, like, he was very present in earlier adventures, but he's always kind of off camera, like, <laughs> yeah. getting a sandwich somewhere for a yeah. while, but then it's Especially when he disappeared into the Feywild and nobody's seen Horus, except for obviously recently some people have just for the first time seen Horus again, but yes. Gormo doesn't know that. No. So Gormo has thought uh, Horus is basically gone. Gormo searched for him for a very long time and uh, well now Gormo has uh, kind of found a resting place, but resting place, he has found a, a place to stay now in Shimmer City. Um, uh, he's there, he has family there. He does. Um, a, a relatively new family. Um, but yeah, he is kind of just, just trying to make ends meet. He is not as, I was gonna say he's not as cheerful as he once was, but he wasn't really cheerful before. He's just sadder now, I guess, <laughs> if that's possible. Um, because I mean, Horace was a big part of his life. Um, and he still feels bad and feels slightly responsible about, cause he doesn't know if he's alive. Probably doesn't think he is. So, uh, yeah, that's Gormo. You know, a, a tale of happiness. Great upstart. Yeah. <laughs> Our next guest uh, is Hillary Levi, returning as Rialma Rattan, the Tiefling Rogue. Hey, welcome back, Hillary. It's good to be back. And you're back in Shimmer City. You've sort I've of... never left. That's true. You never actually left. you actually settled there. So She's how... my main lady. How... <laughs> That's right. That's exactly how we ended <laughs> yeah. it. So how have things been going in Shimmer City? Oh, good. Uh, Rialma's been uh, amassing her vast smuggling empire, <laughs> trying to uh, get you know not always successful. But um, and then kind of always watching her back to make sure Horace doesn't enter her life again. <laughs> as you as everyone defenses, <laughs> as everyone who encounters Horace, yes. prepares for that day. As a, one day, I'm just gonna hear Kitty and run away. It's I forgot a little bit of PTSD until you said that. I 100 percent forgot the, that that Horace thinks, thought you were a cat. He thinks I'm oh, a yeah. cat. I absolutely, absolutely forgot that he doesn't know the difference between cats and tieflings. And he calls me real me. <laughs> Yep. So yeah, Horace is real dumb. Yeah, really uh, dumb. Moving on to our next guest, uh, Daniel Fernandez, returning as Stu the Maniac Wellington. Hey, hey, hey! And uh, Stu is a half orc bard wrestler. Yes, in the time since the last adventure, um, he's been uh, working, uh, taking care of the kids in the city. Um, he's also taken a couple of fighter levels because he needs to be less dramatic and needs to just be able to be like, okay. If fairies are going to try to come kidnap my kids again or bandits or whatever, I'm just going to go kill them with my sword. Perfect. I don't need to be fancy with my wrestling moves. And that's right. You opened up an orphanage, but yes. uh, circumstances in this episode are bringing you to Shimmer City. That's how it works. Yeah. Yeah. It pulls everyone in eventually. Yeah. And our final guest is Allison Fox returning as Isolde Gavroche Canton. Hey, everybody. As the Wood Elf Ranger noble engaged betrothed to Prince Horace Kemp. Good luck. Sentenced. <laughs> <laughs> sentence. Sentence. Oh, uh, well, she had a good run. <laughs> yeah, she was a great character. Uh, let's see. So. Oh, and your, and your horse, of course. Yes, uh, and my horse, uh, Levity. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, I am the uh, of the House of Canton, and I am engaged to Horace Kemp for my family. I am a uh, soldier um, and a uh, particularly attuned to uh, beasts and nature and dragons. Mm-hmm. That's right. You have a f- a familiarity with them. I do. And you are here looking for uh, Gormo. I am. Yeah, trying to find him and uh, tell him like, hey, Horace is alive again, and. Hey, you know, you've known Gorm- you've known Horace for a long time. What should I be prepared for? <laughs> am I trying to am I trying to recruit him back into the fold? Probably. Yeah, I think that's definitely what uh perhaps Gormo would like. We'll see what happens. Who knows? It'll depend. Maybe he likes his new life. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Didn't seem like he had the most optimistic intro. What? <laughs> He's with his family. Look, if I've seen enough Fast and Furious movies to know that family <laughs> is the most important thing. That's We've true. never seen enough Fast and Furious movies. Family. There's always more to be seen. <laughs> hey, some of them are really good. <laughs> One of them is really good. <laughs> All right, guys, those are our characters. So let's begin the adventure. Shimmer City. From a distance, the light makes it seem like a promise of opportunity. But when you're finally close enough to learn your lesson, it's too late to change your mind. Once Shimmer City gets its hooks into you, it pulls you in. Everyone comes to Shimmer City for a reason. But like the constant rain, the city soaks into your bones and becomes a part of you. You forget what life was like before you arrived. But you tell yourself you found a home in Shimmer City. And if you're lucky, you might even believe it. Is old. you have arrived in Shimmer City trying to track down Gormo the Manservant, and unbeknownst to you... My ar- last name. My, my <laughs> Gormo, the, <laughs> Gormo the Manservant. Around the same time, another fellow has arrived in town, uh, Stu Wellington, formerly known as the Maniac. Both of you trying to track down some leads for very different reasons. Uh, Stu, why don't we start with you? What is your objective here in Shimmer City? Well, I'm heading up to Shimmer City because the orphanage has been pretty good. We've been able to build it up. Uh, I've been feeding the kids okay. It's not the worst place in the world. But uh, I'm always worried that the Fae will come and start screwing with us again. So Shimmer City is the place where you can get pretty much anything in the world. So I'm coming here to try and get some sort of anti fay like warding or artifacts that I can, you know, maybe a symbol I can scribe onto the orphanage to keep stuff out. I figure that I can either go to the big marketplace or maybe I can, uh, I used to move in sort of more illicit circles. I used to, you know, smuggle things occasionally before I was wrestling and even when I was. So I'm hoping maybe I can meet up with some old friends here as well. And you have a contact here in Shimmer City, perhaps. I would like you to roll an investigation check to try to find your old contact. Okay, cool. I have plus one on investigation. Awesome. (laughs) Well, I rolled an 18, so that's 19. Yeah, you managed to track down the whereabouts and get in touch with Rialma Rattan, someone that you've cross paths with very very infrequently you just met them in passing a couple times but you know where she'll be yeah. uh, and you guys agree to meet in a public pay- place Rialma you have a particular public place you're interested in going uh yes because you know that Gormo's been living here for a while I do but you've heard a little rumor a little bird has whispered something about what he's been doing for the last couple of years and it might have actually been a bird it may, <laughs> may have actually this been is a bird. D&D yeah that's a thing that could happen um and you got to see it to believe it, but you've heard a rumor that Gormo, sad, pathetic, sniveling Gormo, is moonlighting as a wrestler named the Castle Freak. Oh, yes. In order to see if this is really true, you've agreed to meet Stu in a public environment where you guys can talk and, you know, be seen and it's fine. But you got to see if this Castle Freak character is really Gormo. Yeah, I need to know. And as old, you have known from Horace that the castle freak is Gormo, the manservant. And when you hear that he's performing in Shimmer City, well, that's the first place to start. And we open in the arena where uh, Gormo as Castle Freak. Describe your costume as Castle sure. Freak. So uh, his Castle Freak costume, uh, much like uh, Stu Wellington, the maniac who has a, a, a mask, basically. Mm-hmm. It was, I remember it was a blue mask with white piping. Yes. Um, uh, he has a purple mask with uh, black piping mm-hmm. um, going through. And uh, basically, 
uh, you know, the I guess you'd consider the eviler color. The, so. the nega duck version. <laughs> of. <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, and he doesn't wear a shirt, so he's he's completely shirtless, and he has like tight black pants mm-hmm. and uh, thick black boots. Um, and basically, he is just bare chested with just the mask on to cover his face. Um, and that's his outfit. And you step into the ring, and the crowd cheers and boos because. Uh, uh, well, actually, no. Is Castle Freak a villain? Not I mean, really. Villains sometimes fight other villains. Yeah, like, true. We, yeah. So you're, you're. I would say a character called Castle Freak yeah. is probably a villain. <laughs> yeah. So you're a bit of a bad guy. You're a bit of a bad egg in the in the ring in mm-hmm. the kayfabe of it all. And you're squaring off against an individual. He's a half orc fellow, a big guy, broad shoulders. His uh, costume is. Uh, decorated to look like feathers. Uh, this is Owlbear Jones. Owlbear Jones <laughs> squaring off in the ring against now, you. Now, is he the resident wrestler and I'm a challenger, or am I the resident wrestler and I th- he's the challenger? I think you're the challenger. Oh. I think I think they're. Uh, he's defending his title. Is he Owlbear themed? Yes. Oh yes. He's Owlbear amazing. themed. He's got a beak as part of his mask. He's got like little wings on the side on like his cloak when he comes in, and he drops that off, and he's just got his leotard essentially. And he's going to square off with you. Have I heard of Jones before? Uh, you've heard of him, but he was an up and comer. He okay, was an upstart. Okay. He didn't have nearly this big a fan base last okay. time you were in the uh, in the circle. So he certainly seems to have come up in the last couple of years. Kids. Yeah, he's he was a young. Uh, he he looked up to you a little bit, but he was kind of a brat. Hmm. Now, yeah. is this my first fight with Albert Jones? This is your first fight with Albert Jones? Okay. Yeah. Is this my first fight in this public setting, or do people mm, know me? No, you've been fighting here for a couple weeks. Probably. Okay. Have I been doing okay? <laughs> Uh, you've been doing all right. Well, I mean, it is a little staged. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> but I would actually like you to make a performance check. You got it. As this wrestling, as this wrestling match begins. Zero modifier. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to interpret that as, because he rolled an eight, uh, 17, you're the one who's scheduled to lose tonight. Yeah. So you're, you're basically throwing the fight and you're, you're putting up a good fight against him. Meanwhile, Rialma and Stu, the two of you are in the, uh, in the crowd encountering each other how do you guys interact so what what's the arena look like is it chairs is it like standing room yeah. around it, like, is, what is it? it is uh folding chairs essentially yeah okay and what's the crowd like oh uh, rambunctious rambunctious yeah it's a it's a it's a crowd it's a busy night and there's a there's a sort of octagon in the middle of the room where the fight is happening is it mostly like nefarious perps or no it's your general it's, it's a regular it's a regular riffraff okay. crowd it's it's not a it's i not mean it's shimmer city so yeah. it's they're all scum it's but. a little six yeah. to one half dozen the yeah. other yeah. <laughs> You, you guys hear a boo from the crowd and you see up that I've stunned uh, Albert Jones in the head so he's kind of <laughs> dazed. I go up to the one of the corners and I stand up on, on like one of the high peaks and I go into kind of like a plank like I'm standing flat and I go you get the drawbridge and I lean backwards slowly <laughs> to land on him backwards and I hit him in the head and he flies back and he's dazed. And then, and then he, he cocks his ear to the crowd and he goes who wants to hear more? Because he's got puns too. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, I'm I'm sort of looking around. Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen Rialma, uh, and again, we both were like working for. She was more independent. I was working for uh, the Tojo Clan. I don't even know if they're even around anymore in the city, but they were like one of the smuggling. Oh, groups believe that- me, they're no longer here. Oh man, that's too bad. <laughs> I like them, but um, I wonder what happened to they them. They work. They work for me now. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Well, uh, you're the new uh, chairman or whatever. Um, but I'm looking around the crowd for her, and maybe I actually like catch catch her in the corner of my eye. Um, but then I immediately hear like, "You're gonna get the drawbridge," and I look up and I'm like, <laughs> "Wait a minute, is that the castle freak?" And I I was looking around yeah. for you, but now I'm distracted by just like turned around and like looking at this match like and, and incredulously. I'm just, I'm just sort of standing here like, okay, well, if he wants a deal, he'll come to me. And yeah. does <laughs> does Rialma roll deep at these events? Like, do you have do you have people? Do you I, have connections? I usually well at these types of events, I don't want to draw too much attention. Um, right. So I maybe travel with like one or two warlocks on my side. Maybe a wizard instead of a warlock. You never know. Uh, all right, so I'm distracted for a moment, but I shake my head yeah. for a little bit. And I'm like, okay, no, 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 no. And uh, I go over to uh, Rialma, and I, I offer my hand. It's like, uh, hello, uh, Rialma. Is that, I'm sorry, what what title should I give you? Do you have a title these days? Rialma's fine. All right, well, Rialma, I... That is the title. Uh, oh. <laughs> it's like Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, that's great. Look, I don't know if you got uh, my message, but... Uh, I've been looking to... Uh, I did. You have the orphans. 
Yes, I do have the orphans. Little yes. Sykes. Yes, they there. I I really want to take care of those guys. Um, but uh, we've been having some Feywild problems. I've been looking to. I, I see are these spellcasters with you here? Um, if you have access to any sort of like uh, you know warding spells or anything like that, I was looking to see if I could buy those from you. Hmm. I mean, this feels a little strange place to be doing this kind of dealing. Well, yeah, I know. I just. I don't want to do this criminal thing anymore. That's why so I just kind of want to get there. But I, this is something I really need for the kids. And I was hoping we could, you know, we have a little bit of a history. We both have run in these circles before. I'm I'm sort of out of the game, but I, I maybe you could help help me out, help out the kids. And what is it you're looking for again? Um, well, there's there's an idol, uh, a, a Feywild, like an idol based on like the sort of the the Feywild. Well, sort of an anti Feywild thing. It was cursed. I think it was made by an old wizard. I honestly don't even know. I just I heard if through the grapevine there was like an idol that you could put that creates like an anti Fey like aura going around. Gotcha. Well, I don't have one of those, but. You can have this guy, and I point to, like, the warlock next to me. I pay him pretty handsomely, so he can go with you now. <laughs> There's a, a sort of slender human with, like, kind of greased back hair and, like, a pencil-thin mustache and very yeah. thin goatee. He sort of looks at you like, uh, yeah, yeah, sure thing. I, I can come with you. Oh, Nice uh, to meet you! I mean, moat you! <laughs> uh, is... Has he been wrestling here long? That guy? You know, that is a great question. Uh, you don't, you don't know anything about this guy, do no, you? No, no, like, I used to, I used to wrestle with him. Like, my smuggling, like... Oh, you're a wrestling... Well, no, so... Aficionado. Well, no, I was a wrestler. Like, that was like, because you're a smuggler, like, you get this. Yeah. I was a smuggler, like, that was my cover. Oh, uh, uh, like, that's I was an a, interesting cover. Like, I was a wrestler, yeah. and then I traveled around, but, like, in usually, my bags, I moved, like, you know, illegal yeah. drugs and usually stuff. Usually people hide the fact that they're a smuggler. Oh, the wrestling thing was your cover. Oh, I misspoke, I misspoke, I misspoke, And yes. the smuggling was your cover. No, 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 the wrestling was my cover. I, I don't I'm know how to talk. I'm gonna tar it up! Oh God! Um, so, <laughs> what would I pay you, sir? Oh, uh, uh, what's your what's your name, sir? Flex. Flex. All right. It's nice fine. to meet you. I'm gonna pay for him to help guard you, but when the little orphans grow up, they have to come visit Auntie Riyama. Uh, oh, oh, so they're like, not gonna die. <laughs> Well, right. They're not gonna die. I... <laughs> yeah, they, they don't die. <laughs> no, oh. they actually don't die. I just want them to come work for me. Oh, um, always looking for new hands. Uh, you know, let me think about that. I could, I think maybe the kids can maybe not be criminals. I mean, if we're helping other people, is that really criminal? Oh, yeah. Um, let me. You sure you don't have something I could just like buy from you? I'm sorry, this is this is no, really this... Th- throwing me off. Like, no, I really appreciate it. Um, yeah. I yeah. mean, I thought you wanted to help the kids, but I guess I guess not. I mean, I, <laughs> I'm usually very confident. This whole situation has thrown me off quite a bit. Uh, yeah, no. I I trust you that Mikael right next to me here can totally, absolutely. I'm super confident in his abilities to dispel any fey. Well, I guess we could always use the help around. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you very much you for that. You are so welcome. So I'll make sure that the kids come and meet you. That'll That's the deal. They'll, yeah, they'll I may stop by. Where is this orphanage again? Oh, we're in... Uh, oh, crap. What was Fenshire? the name of the city? Festenshire. Festenshire. Oh, Festenshire. Festenshire. Yes. Yeah, in Festenshire. Yeah. I will keep that in mind. Come by any time. Uh, we're, we're pretty good. We can Aww. put it great at... Make it great. Anything... Thank you. I, you are so welcome. I can't wait to meet the little cherubs. All right. This is very generous of you. Oh, man. And Stu is just like already feeling terrible about the fact that the only way to save these kids is to get involved in the life of crime that's coming back. Uh, Isolde, we're going to cut over to you yeah. as you're entering the arena and you see this. Uh, is there horse parking or does the yeah. horse come in as well? There's horse parking There's outside. There's <laughs> There's valet horse parking. So I'm walking in, and I'm approaching Gormo, right? Well, that's the objective, but he's up in the ring at the moment. Gotcha. So, I mean, I walk in, and I, uh, you know, I take a seat, and then I hide in plain sight. All right, perfect. Uh, go ahead and just make a stealth check for me. You've got a bunch of crazy bonuses, so it shouldn't be a problem. 
Yeah. You come to the castle, you get the freak. A uh, natural 18. Nice. Yeah, you're definitely able to blend into the crowd. <laughs> keep yourself lie low. Um, you notice something. I va- well, I vanish, actually. Yes. Yeah, that's the one you're using, yeah. yeah. So you vanish. Um, you have a pretty good passive perception. Mm-hmm. So you're able to see sort of as you're scanning the room, as you're keeping surroundings. And Stu, you notice this as well as you're sort of anxiously looking around you being like, what have I gotten myself into? The two of you notice someone stumble into the room through the crowd. Very difficult to spot them through the chaos of the crowd, but both of you notice this individual. Uh, It's a human. He's got worn clothes. He's got long hair. Looks like he has an eye patch on the left side of his face, and he's bleeding. He's covering his, his chest and his abdomen, trying to hold his organs essentially it seems like he's losing a lot of blood there's there's blood every time he takes a takes a footstep and he's stumbling through the crowd and he's actually making his way towards you and Rialma you meaning me yes do okay. sorry <laughs> yeah i didn't know you're we talking sorry and point of order i have no knowledge of these humans these uh, people these, i'm a these half orc yeah you don't know the half <laughs> yeah, orc or the tiefling no got it. Okay. you don't know them at all uh, but you notice this individual, Stu, coming towards you specifically. I immediately pop up and run over to him and say, like, are you are you okay, man? I need you, to you... find Rialma. Where is she? Uh, R- Rialma, this... Uh, I'm th- that's me. Yeah. You turn around and you see, you recognize this man. This is Rex Winters. Oh, my God. Rex. Oh, my... And he, he reaches out towards you. He says, Rialma, find Dushan Reinhardt. And as he says that... I can cast Cure Wounds? As... He says that there's a flash of light behind him and a figure appears out of nowhere. 12 feet tall, green skin, horns on its head, wings on its back, wielding a great axe. This humanoid, but very like like the Hulk, but with horns and wings, wielding a great axe. The axe blade about the size of Rialma's torso, swish of its axe and it just cuts off Rex's head. The head drops to the ground. There's a spurt of blood across both of you as the body drops. I would like everyone to roll for initiative real quick. Hell yeah. 21. Uh, 21? Anyone get higher than that? No. <laughs> Absolutely uh, not. I, I, I have advantage on initiative, don't I? Uh, You do, actually. Oh, 19. So that's a 23. Oh, okay. Damn. What did you get? Real? Oh, I rolled a 7. Oh, and <laughs> so. I got a 15. 15, all right. How large is it? Like, what size category is it? Uh, It is... It is large. Okay, good. It I can wrestle. It is a large up. creature. That's uh, fine. But and first... It, it's not like infernal. Uh, make an arcana check for me. Oh, okay. Should we all do that? Yeah, everyone can make an arcana check. I mean, I have plus one to arcana, but. Oh, jeez. Four. Fifteen? Thirteen? Oh, I don't know. It seems demon y. I mean, the horns and wings. Again, this is like a big green Hulk with four horns coming out of its head. Yeah. And big green wings. Yeah. And a giant axe. Yeah. It looks a little bit yeah. like. Does the, it have any clothes on terrifying. it? Terrifying. Uh, it has like, it has some very basic clothing, sort of like a, like a tunic and some pants, but no bare chest, sort mm. of a broad chest, it's a little overweight, but not, you know, it wears it well. Uh, is old. You're the first to act. Okie dokie. I am going. Oh, and by the way, the crowd is just panicking. Uh, they're, they haven't reacted yet, but. You can tell that there is going to be some some fracas in here. Okay, I shoot. Oof, that's a thirteen. Thirteen that's misses. So you make your attack. It misses. It just whoosh, goes off into the rafters. Yeah. Uh, would you like to? And then I will, um, like as a bonus action, I will freeze again. Okay. Uh, make another cell check. Uh, got a natural two, but still, uh, but still. Um, yeah, you have like a plus ten to that, plus your stealth, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, it's actually, it's a 9 to 10 to perception if somebody's trying to, trying to find Oh, that's what it is. Okay. So, but with my stealth, that's still a, that's still an 11. So, I actually don't have to roll. It's just, if somebody's like, who shot that? Like, I hold still and like, they're, they don't. Okay, he's going to make a quick, and it's a minus 10 to his thing. That gives him only a 6. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, So, it does not know where you are. Okay. Uh, Stu, you're next. All right. I yell, let's uh, bring it on. Which is my contingency spell. Okay. When I yell, bring it on, I cast enlarge on myself. And without without spending a spell slot today, because contingency yeah. is basically... And also without spending an action, so it takes place instantaneously. Oh, that's good. That's that, a good spell. That's that's why I do that, so I can just immediately get... I don't know. You already compared him to the Hulk, but maybe I'm hulking out or yeah. whatever, as I just like start growing larger and larger, and I just run towards the screen. I'm right next to it, because he just cut off this yeah, guy's head. you're like so we, at most 10 feet away. Do all you right. have your mask on? 
Uh, no, I don't have my mask on. Okay. But I, and I'm not going to put it on. Yeah, I'm yeah, not, yeah. You know, I'm not here to wrestle. I'm here to to stop this thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I pull out my battle axe uh, and then I run forward and tackle this guy and try to grab him with my other hand. I'm going to try to make a grapple check against right. him. Athletics. Um, I rolled a 29. That's super duper higher than what he got. Okay. So yeah, he is he is grappled by you. All right, that's my first attack. Uh-huh. Uh, let's see. So who's going to go next in the order, by the way? Uh, Do Gormo, we know? Gormo got higher than Ryama. Gormo? Okay, yeah. When we don't know when it's going to go. You don't know when it's going to go. All right. Hmm. Uh, well, I already made my action. I'm just... So I've got it, and now I'm going to shove it. I'm going to make it prone. So I've grabbed it, and now I'm going to force it to be prone. All right. Let's make another uh, yes. strength versus things. Damn, that was low. Let's see. Well, I got a 10, so... Oh, I I rolled a 17 plus my 14 athletics, so, like, uh, yeah. So I've jumped on it, I've grabbed it, and I forced it to the ground, and now I'm going to use my action surge... Okay. Oh, boy. ...to to whack it twice with my battle axe. So I've I've grabbed it, I'm forced it to the ground. It is prone, so you have advantage. Yeah, it's prone, so I have advantage. I'm holding him down with one hand, and with so I'm just like with my hand, you know, because I'm a, I'm now its size because I'm enlarged. Yes. Um. Oh, I had advantage on those checks that I wasn't even taking advantage. It's of. fine. You you did you did well. Um. So now uh, I'm holding him with my hand, and with my other hand, I'm smacking him with my axe. Actually, let me double. I forgot what enlarge does. I should make it, sure it adds a D4 to your damage. It's a D4 to my damage. I yeah. think okay. that sounds right, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, and I'm gonna make two attacks. Go for it. That would be a natural one on my first attack. Oh, you do have advantage. Oh, on the I have attack. advantage because he's down. Yeah, yeah don't so, forget about that. Okay, so that Thank that. God. So I rolled that one, but instead I rolled a nine, which is not amazing, but uh, nine. So that's nineteen to hit. Nineteen hits. Yes. All right. He's cool. not wearing any armor. All right. So that's a D eight plus five. So I mean, that's not an amazing amount of damage, but I do nine slashing damage to it. Nine slashing damage. All right. And then I'm gonna make another attack. I rolled a critical hit. Alrighty, Woo-hoo. go ahead and roll a bunch of dice. Yes, so I'd roll my damage, and because I'm a half orc, my uh, damage is even higher. Yes, that's true. Uh, so first, roll your damage dice twice. All right, so and that's then, then you roll it uh, uh, one more time on top of that. That's right. Yeah. Five nine. Uh, I do twenty one damage. Twenty one slashing damage. Very nice. Yes. There's a total of thirty that round. Yes. Alrighty. So I ran up, I grabbed him, I forced that's, him to the ground, your, and then smacked him twice. That was your first attack. Oh no, that was both attacks. That was both attacks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was Perfect. using my because the second turn. was the critical. Got yes. All right, it is going to act next. It is going to teleport behind you. Uh, as in a burst of magic, it disappears behind you. It stands up and makes an attack against you. Okay. Ooh. I promise that hits. It is a with the axe. I'm sorry, actually, he's not using his axe. He's using his claw, and that is a 26 to hit. All right, that will take uh, damage. Yeah. All right, you take uh, 12 slashing damage. Go ahead and make a constitution saving throw for me. Okay. Um, oh, god damn it. I rolled a one on my constitution saving throw. All right, uh, all right. good to know. And no effects going to play now? Uh, it happens at the top of your next turn. Good to know. It, it, uh, what best That's never a good response when you feel no. the same. It's and also like poison no, it's, damages you. It's actually like... not good for you to know. It's not that. <laughs> and also because I've taken damage, I need to make oh, a constitution. nothing happens. Uh, I was just I kidding. A, yes. You go well, ahead and make also, a, I need to make a concentration check to stay big. So roll and add your constitution. All right. So 15 plus four, that's 19. Yeah, that's that's fine because yeah. you did not take that much damage. Yeah, okay. Um, but you, the thing you notice is that you're grabbing your wound. It is bleeding quite heavily. Lovely. It seems to be that it is a deep, deep wound. Okay, that's fine. That's all it's going to do on this turn, actually. So what kind of movement is that for the, the teleport? Uh, teleport is part of its action. It's actually oh. a thing that it can do. Okay, cool. So cool, it, does cool. not, uh, it does not get, affect its movement. It is just able to teleport away from you. Uh, Gorma. Damn. All right. So I turn to uh, Albert Jones, who's in the ring, I yeah. assume, at this point. He is. Albert, we got to take care of this. You with me? I'm with you. All right, man. You ready to do it? We practiced it before. So I'm going to... I'm going to pull up Albert Jones like into my like hand basically and I'm going to fastball special throw him towards the guy in green. All right, uh Albert Jones is going to make an attack roll. Yeah, that's a 19 plus uh 9. Uh no, sorry, plus 4. No, it's not a saving throw. Uh and it's unarmed attack. It's not that much, but he's just going to grapple him, I guess. So he's just going to jump on him and, yeah, and wrap so him up. Yeah, so the creature is going to roll a 2. So yeah, 
uh, it is. It has been grappled by Albert Jones. Awesome. For my movement, I'm going to move up to the top of the ring, so I'm on one of the corner, like the the top, the corner edges of the ring, and standing yeah. on it, ready to jump. All right, you're preparing your action, or no, you you're out of yeah. Stuff. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm out of stuff to do, but I'm just getting ready for next turn. Got it. Uh, all right, Rialma, you're up. I have a question about you know that special call that you have to do f- to get Gormo to come to you. Yes, basically. Does that like automatic like does that trigger Gormo in a way? Is it sort of like a Pavlovian response <laughs> that like he automatically like comes to you? I feel like probably. Probably. <laughs> Knowing Gormo as we do, he's I, quite conditioned. I think he's definitely conditioned. <laughs> um, but like I don't know if it, it's more of like a PTSD, I guess, than anything. <laughs> like he, he doesn't like he isn't like charmed and like comes to you, but like it'll definitely be like I know that. Yeah. It's worth a shot. Um okay, so I use thaumaturgy to make my voice boom three times louder yes <laughs> and Jesus. i go 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 gormo <laughs> that's right <laughs> and gormo you turn your your cover blown as you see rialma in the crowd and i hide like duck behind one of my like warlock dudes and like hide behind them all right make a stealth check okay 27 yeah you're fine okay. <laughs> so you yell and i turn and like you're just gone <laughs> Somebody's fucking with well, <laughs> me. I'm having flashbacks. Well, I, I, like, I, I would assume he would see me before I like go oh, okay, behind okay. the person. Yeah. So you make eye contact yeah. with me and then disappear. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Top of the round uh, is old. The, the crowd is starting to stampede out of the building at this point. Okay. You know, I don't know these people, so I'm gonna keep my distance. But I'm gonna conjure some animals. Alrighty. I'm summoning two giant eagles. Time to scratch out some eyes. Scratch out. Summon some eyes. those eagles. To scratch out some eyes. Alrighty. Uh, go ahead and roll for their initiative. It adds, I think, plus two for their decks. Seven. All right. At some point, I am gonna print out all the monsters. So I don't have to- oh, it's plus three. All right. So they go in between Gormo and Rialma. And I hide again. Like I can do that, and then just freeze yeah <laughs> just make eagles and be like gone yep Alrighty. Of smoke. well i don't have to even i don't even have i don't have to move to conjure animals no so i'm fully hidden like i'm invisible yeah like, I've you're just vanished. pointing out of wherever you are just making eagles and stuff yeah the- so are you just in the crowd invisible or like you're melding into the chair you're sitting on <laughs> yeah yeah blending into the crowd essentially yeah. like hiding i mean they're creating quite a bit of cover because they're panicking and exactly right. exactly so. she's a wood elf i believe that she could make herself look like a chair i'm not i'm not saying that she couldn't <laughs> Stu, go for it all righty uh, so on now at the top of your turn, yeah, uh, something you bad happens. Your side, you take uh, five more slashing damage. <laughs> Nothing. Well, I'm I, fine. I do need you to make another concentration check. Oh, every time you take damage, you yeah, only need yeah, a ten. Yeah. Oh no! Uh, it's Constitution save. Constitution check. Constitution check. Oh dear. Um, why well, rolled a two plus my Constitution of four? One better, double better than what you rolled before. Yes. Yeah. So that's. So I'm no, I'm no longer enlarged. So you shrink back down to your regular size. I shrink back down to my regular size. Ah, that's not great. Whatever. That was a, that was, those were two turns of highs and lows. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, well, I got a crit, and now I'm tiny. Whatever, it's fine. You're still taller than me, buddy. Yeah, well, you're a dwarf. Um, <laughs> except we haven't talked to each other yet. We uh, haven't. All right. Well, I'm going to cast Bestow Curse on this creature. All right. Does it have to make us safe? Yes, I'm going to cast it at uh, fifth level, so I don't not need to concentrate to cast it. It's just a spell that gets cast. Oh, cool. Yes. Uh, casting time is one action, right? Casting time is one action, yes. What, what's the save it has to make? It has to make a, a wisdom saving throw. That was a two. Okay, well, my spell I mean, save plus, is 16. Oh, plus zero. So yeah, zero. I didn't think it was particularly wise. <laughs> no, it's not particularly aware. All of right, so I was debating about the nature of the curse. Here's what it's going to be. While cursed, the target must make a wisdom saving throw at the start of each of its turns. If it fails, it wastes its action that turn and does nothing. Nice. Whoa. That's real good. Ah. Done. Uh, all right. Oh, and no, 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 I'm not done. Yeah. I'm not <laughs> oh. done. Oh. So because I am a uh, because I'm a valor bard, mm-hmm. whenever I cast a spell, I can then make an attack afterwards. Nice, nice. Um, which is called like uh, battle music or something like that. Anyway, <laughs> I'm sure it's battle music. Yeah. Um, so now I am going to grapple it. All right. <laughs> so that's going to be twenty. Jeez. I rolled uh, a six. God. What? So you rolled a six and you got a... Oh, it's his athletics. Yeah. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah. 
It only rolled a 17, so you managed to... You, it's double grappled now, because it's already grappled by, uh, by, by Al Jones. Jones. Oh, I didn't realize Albo Jones already grabbed him. Well, He's I don't trust the- Albert Jones yeah. necessarily. Uh, maybe I should have punched him. Oh, well, we... <laughs> I don't know. If you you can you can take that back. You can. Yeah, I forgot Albo Jones had grabbed him, so I'm actually just going to hit him with so just my. Just make yeah. an attack roll. All right. Oh, you've gotta be kidding me! One? I rolled a one. Oh God! No. Good God! Has that been like one two one? It's not been great. <laughs> Oh, I'm no. sitting, I've rolled two one so far. I'm sitting quietly being like, these poor fools. <laughs> Whatever. I cursed it. So that's all that matters. That's good. Yeah. Uh, all right. So you make a swing and uh, you go ahead and hit Albert Jones. Go yeah, that was, damage. that was that was what was going to happen there. That's all right. Albert Jones is a 16th level barbarian too. So he's got uh, 10 damage to him. All right. Um, all right. First thing, the monster makes a wisdom saving throw. Uh, God, I wish that was cocked. No, it's a five. So it does nothing this turn. The curse is just flowing through it. It can't think because of yeah. my magic, baby. So it's, you see this sort of chaos in its eyes. Actually, now that you're as close yeah. as you are, uh, you notice a couple other things about it. You notice that uh, under each of its collarbones on its shoulders, there are two tattoos. Mm. Uh, go ahead and make an arcana check for me. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Stu makes the arcana check. Oh, I roll well on that. Uh, 19 on my arcana check 19 uh, you know you've heard of these these are tattoos of binding okay whatever this thing is has been bound to or by or with something okay well Mm. I guess it's a slave that's too bad I'm gonna kill it okay Uh, so that's its turn Uh, it's okay I got it locked down uh, literally seems to be without their Jones yeah Yeah, it doesn't have anything that makes it not cursed looking at its powers okay uh Rialma. Uh, no sorry Gormo. so i'm on the on the corner of the ring and i'm looking down at the the green guy albert jones has got his got him grappled and i see a half orc punching him uh you're put no you're attacking him with a battle axe yes and i only see the back of you but i was like i feel like i've seen him before yeah. i don't know that's interesting Ugh. and i shake it off and i get back into my voice didn't you hear before? If you come to the castle, you get the freak. And I lean down and my muscles tense. My eyes go ripple and bloodshot rip through my eyes and I go into a rage. Alrighty. I grab the bottom of the uh, corner of the ring and I just leap into the air to come down onto him. And I basically just... I'm aiming to just come right down on top of him and just punch him right Superman in the face. Superman punch, yeah. Super punch, yeah. Um, I can jump pretty far, but I can roll an athletics check for you. Go ahead and roll an athletics check. I believe you have advantage because you are raging. I do, but that was probably enough anyway, but we'll do it with advantage. Oh, better. Uh, 21. Yeah, you... you so I'd come Superman, down come it. down and punch. I don't have a weapon on me because no. I've been in the ring, so I'm going to be unarmed punching him with D4s. I believe an unarmed punch is just one damage plus your strength. I just went looking through the weapons area to try to find it. I, it's they, like, it says, it takes you on a wild goose chase. It's, it's like, they errated it. It, it, it is, it is It's one. just one? Okay, yeah. perfect. Plus your strength. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. it's probably more. And I'm more. raging, so I actually get even more with that too. Yeah. So basically, so that means I'm just going to be doing 10 damage flat whenever yeah. I punch this guy. Flat 10 damage. So let me try to punch him. Nope, as a one, a critical fail. Poor Owlbear Jones takes another so, 10 damage. As you oh, punch no, because I punch Owlbear Jones. Oh, no. <laughs> See, I'm two in character, so I was like, I've been uh, like facing off against this guy, so I hit him. Well, in the it's face. something me and the Castle Freak have in common is we just keep hitting Owlbear Jones. So, I'm sorry, Owlbear Jones, and I swing again to try because I have two attacks. Someone in the crowd goes, Wait, is this still part of the show? <laughs> He's my, the, the green guy's my friend. Yeah. He came into the ring like, ah. Oh, no, that wasn't as good either. 14? I'm sure his AC isn't that low. It's not that low, So no. I punch the ground. No, you, you punch him and just, boom, and there's just no effect as he <sighs> just sort of glares down at you. Unable to do anything else but that, but he is uh, pissed at you. I will say this. As I hit the, as I punch him, I look down and I see in his hand him holding this giant battle axe. Yeah. And I thought crosses my mind. Okay. By the way, I should mention my curse lasts for eight hours. Oh, good to know. Yeah. Cool. So he's going to remain cursed until we kill him. <laughs> well, he's, he's even if he makes everything. it out of this fight, like he just like has moments where he's like walking through the street and he just stops. He's like, oh, damn every, it. Every six seconds. Damn it, every so at seconds. The, well, at the end of every, at the, at the beginning of every round, he makes the save to do something, but he remains cursed. Yes. yes. Th- that's what I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. The Eagles act next. Oh, yeah. I'm like, scratch out his eyes, please, guys. All right. Uh, have both the Eagles uh, swoop down and make attacks. All righty. Yes, master. My favorite words. All right. Um, that was a natural eight, but 
Uh, we the, are rolling so well today. Yeah. The attack bonus is plus five. So, from, sorry, from the from the beak of the talon. Oh, it's both plus five. Yeah. Uh, doing talons or beak? Uh, oh, they can do they can do both actually. Yep. So they can do two attacks each. So so I roll twice. Roll four times. Ah, oh, gotcha. Two attacks from each animal. Okay, gotcha. Eight. Ugh, a one. Wow, guys. A this ten. Is, this is going real well. Ten total. That's the plus five. Uh, and a 14. No, I haven't added anything. Uh, 14 plus 5 is the only one that hits. 19, yeah. 19 hits. So uh, we'll call that the talons. I'm saying beak talons, beak talons. Yeah. Uh, and they go for the eyes. 2d6 slashing damage. Okay. Hellbear <laughs> Jones is going to have to die it's for nine. us. 9. 9 slashing damage. All right. Oh, um, Stu. Yes? You do not have a magical weapon, correct? My weapon is silvered. Okay, that's good to know. Yes, I just for this very sort of occasion. I, I literally was just thinking about this. Not Gormo, because he can't know this, no. but I was just thinking about this. Um, and so how much damage was it total? Uh, nine. Nine, okay. 2d6, yeah. They are fake creatures. That's that's nice. Oh, actually, that's an interesting point. That's what I'm saying. Do they I, count as magical attacks based on the description of conjure animals? Because it wouldn't be for the eagles, but it might be for conjure animals. Yeah. Interesting question. Otherwise, it won't be quite as effective. You also noticed that as well, Stu, when you were making your attacks. It seemed like it was resisting some of the effects of your damage. Like it's like cutting into like a really thick piece of wood. Yeah. Like you don't get as deep as you thought. Uh, Fighting rhino skin. You summon fake creatures that take the form of beasts mm-hmm. and appear in occupied spaces. Um, each beast is also considered fey. Mm-hmm. And it disappears when it drops to zero hit points or when the spell ends. Right. They're fey. Does it does it say anything about their attacks are magical? No, it doesn't. So uh, they are going to go ahead regular. and not deal quite as much damage. So, Ryama, you're up. From where I am hidden, if I were to peek my head over something, could I see the beast's head? Yes, it's it's very tall. Also, did no one have any ira- uh, like reaction to two giant eagles just appearing out of the air? It didn't calm anyone down. <laughs> oh, you mean in terms of the people of these people? Yeah, yeah. The only thing that the, flusters people- Ryama is Horus. <laughs> So. <laughs> yeah, Rex, uh, sorry, um, not Rex. He's not in the picture right now. Um, <laughs> Stu and Rialma and Gormo, you don't know where the eagles came from, but... But I did see them, like, immediately look come down, like, menacingly on top of the demon creature. Yeah, enemy of my enemy. The thing is, like, also I saw um, basically this half-orc man yeah. run up and start fighting him. I think at so, the moment... So, like, I could believe that maybe he made those eagles. I think at the moment yeah, everyone yeah. thinks that someone else here yeah. cast the eagles. I don't look a gift horse in the mouth or gift eagle in the mouth, as it were. <laughs> like, I'm just gonna... I'll just take what I can get. Um, I am going to try and use my hand crossbow to hit him in the face. All right. Uh, I don't remember if you... Do you have advantage? You get sneak attack, at least. I get sneak attack. Yeah, I do think because I'm hidden, I get advantage. I don't remember. Which, I don't know. which type of rogue are you? I am you a, a thief an rogue? awesome rogue. Are you, um, I think I am she's a, thief. I'm a thief. Yeah. Yes, my roguish archetype is thief. I will say... I don't know if it's in the rules, but I'm going to say you have advantage because he doesn't see you because cool. he rolled real garbage on his stealth. Great. Or you rolled real garbage on... You rolled real on your stealth. He did not get a, get a perception. Yeah, I get 22. 22 hits. Great. Six. And I have sneak attack, so I have eight D6 on top of that. Oh, I should have given you a lot more D6 than I did. Yeah, it's fine. I can roll I can roll two sets of four, or yeah, I can just, roll all eight. Just do ones. that for now. Okay. I'll, I'll bust out others. Uh, 38, 44. 44 damage. Yes. That sneak attack is a hell of a move. Jeez. But as, as it hits... Uh, you note that it doesn't quite seem to do as much damage as you thought it should have. What the hell? It seems to be resistant. Should have gotten some silvered weapons, baby. Your Thank silver you weapons the... didn't help either. Oh, they didn't? No. Silver weapons don't help against what so, I can imagine this might be. <laughs> Thank you for the extra D6s. You're welcome. Uh, all right. Next up is... Zo- oh, sorry. Albert Jones. Does Albert Jones want to do anything? Oh, uh, yeah. Albert <laughs> Jones is, Albert Jones is just going to keep punching. All right. Swing away, Albert Jones. Um, Only one hit. 25. 25 hits, yeah. Yeah, so he's just going to do uh, 10 damage. Done. So, psh, punch except, to the face. Except not 10 damage, yeah. yeah. Well, is Albert Jones magic? In his own way. <laughs> but no. Isn't that his, isn't that his deal? Albert magic? Jones should knock him prone. Well, whatever. It, it's, he used both his attacks. Yeah, he used both yeah. his attacks. Yeah, he's, yeah. Just, he's just trying to pummel him. Yeah. Well, no, he hasn't grappled. Yeah, but that's not prone. It's different. Oh, right, right, right. Grapple just means no, you no, can't No, 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 I know. Move. I'm just saying yeah. he's grappled. While he's grappled, he's just punching him. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, next up is as old. We are going to. And when I am concentrating, can I shoot or can yes. I? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're going. We're going to shoot some arrows. Just roll to shoot. Longbow. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, oof, that is a 14. That uh, does 14 not does not hit. hit, no. Cool. I'm going to hide and keep hiding. Cool. <laughs> uh, Stu. All right. I am going to cast Vicious Mockery on him. All right. I believe he has to make a wisdom saving throw. Yes. I don't know where I set my spell book. You got an 11, so. Okay. Well, my spell save is Way 16. higher than that. Yes. Yeah. 3d4 damage. So it's seven psychic damage. All right. That seems to go through regular. All right. So, and I just say, you, this is not, your, you suck, green guy. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you like stutter in the middle yeah, exactly. of your like, I, I, I couldn't figure out what to say. <laughs> but so- dude, you suck. Uh, um, but I, I am cool. <laughs> okay, yeah. so he takes the psychic damage, and he has disadvantage on his next attack roll. And because whenever I cast a spell, I can now make an attack nice. as my bonus action. So you hear him psychically snarl back at you. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be which is a not a usually thing people can do. Eighteen. Uh, 18 just barely hits. Cool. And I am going to use my uh, menacing attack on him. So I'm going to uh, add my superiority die. And he needs to make a wisdom saving throw. He's uh, good at that. Yes. That's, well, natural 20. Oh, okay. So he's... Well, I still do damage to him. Um, so I do 18 damage to him. And, um, well, he's he is not afraid of me. Yeah. Less than that, and he is not yeah. afraid of you. Okay, All that's right, fine. All right, it's his turn. Top of the round. Let's see if he can get another awesome wisdom saving throw and do anything this turn. Not with a three. Uh, so he can't take an action, but what he is going to do is fly up. Just start flying up and up. Uh, with Albert Jones attached to Albert him. Albert Jones is grappled onto him. I'm going to need Albert. Albert Jones to make an athletics check and see if he can hold on. Athletics check from Albert Jones. 15? That's fine. Uh, so he's holding onto him as he's flying up. Um, the eagles are up there. But the rest of you guys, it's a little bit out of your range. Wait, but don't the do the eagles get an attack of opportunity? Yeah, actually, I'll go ahead and say each of them gets one attack of opportunity. Do bite or talons? Your call. Talons an eight and a seventeen. The seventeen plus five will hit. Yes. Yeah. So go ahead and roll. Uh, talons is two d six plus whatever's on the card. I don't remember. Uh, nine plus three is twelve. Twelve. So. And that is all it can really do. Man, this curse has really ruined his day. Hell yeah. <laughs> Crushing his time. Um, that's the Eagles. Ryama. Well, no, that was the Eagles' attack of opportunity. Oh, that's now right. That's right. That's right. So now it's, it's Gormo's turn. Okay. Yeah. So Gormo, how f- high up did he fly? He flew about 20 feet up. Oh, boy. Um, so I could I, jump that high. I cannot jump that they high. I would say that he would ordinarily be able to fly more than that, but because there's a person on his back. He's not able to fly. Because isn't it a half year move? It's actually half. He, he would actually. He's actually thirty feet up. So I can't reach him because even if I jump, I think that's only half. So I'd only be able to get to like seventeen feet. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna basically start to like because I assume this is a built like we're in like a big stadium area, right? Yeah. Is he up above the second floor rafters? Uh, he's about on level with that right now. Okay. So I'm gonna jump up and grab the try to grab the ledge in the second floor and pull myself up and then try to like leap at him. Go ahead and make an athletics check, see if you can get up to that second to the balcony. Uh that's a twenty two. Yeah. I'll so, say you, you you bounce off the ring, you jump up on the Oh, and like use my feet on the uh bouncy and shoot myself yeah, 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 up. You you bounce off the uh the what is it called? Whatever. We all know wrestling terms. Yeah. We don't need to prove ourselves. You <laughs> jump off the cord part and you bounce the, the cord rope. Rope part. The, velvet the ropes. ropes. The ropes, yes. You know, like when people are on the ropes. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I I could have told you it was the ropes. I just had no idea what you were describing. <laughs> well, you're not a real you wrestling you didn't fan. Get, you didn't get it from cord. <laughs> <laughs> so you bounce off the ropes. You jump onto the balcony. You turn back. It's there in front of you. And I'm just trying to just hold on to him. Go ahead and jump again to see if you can grab onto him. 24. 24. He's going to make a check to see if he can get out of the way. 24. So... Uh, in the situation of a tie... So with a tie, the, it stays the same, so I miss him, basically. Oh, yeah. boy, buddy. <laughs> so yeah. I go flying into, like, the second floor stands behind him, oh, I guess? No. Yeah. He moves his leg, and I just go right into the chairs. You take 10 falling damage. Yay! But I believe that's bludgeoning damage, so I believe it's half oh, yeah. for you. All right. Good turn. Uh, eagles. No problem for them to get up there. Higher than... Ooh, that's a 19. Oh, that's that's definitely going to hit. Yeah, it is. Um, Go ahead and roll for all four decks. Okay. 30 feet. How high is the stadium? <laughs> Probably about 50. 
17 and plus five will hit two nope, nope. and uh natural 20 nice all right so go ahead and roll for th- roll what's the modifier what's the plus modifier on your damage uh plus three so go ahead and roll as if you're rolling four attacks and then plus nine two four six eight d6 plus nine eight d6 plus nine yeah okay so that is ooh. that sounds good so that's 35 jeez plus nine is uh 44 yeah halved scratchity scratch 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 yes so what, it's two d six plus three. So I sh- so it's uh, actually plus twelve. Right? Uh, no, because one of the attacks missed. But you double the dice when you make an, a critical hit. Uh, got so. it. All right. Uh, he's not looking super pleased with how things are going. <laughs> Is it because he's not been able to do anything for three rounds? Of yeah, combat? it's been <laughs> it's been a while since he's done anything good. Oh, I'm sorry, Stu. Uh, you took another. Um, no, I was wondering if that had gone away. I wasn't going to bring it up. <laughs> you took another five damage at the top of your turn. I forgot to mention. So he's just getting like cuts on his body. No, it's it's just bleeding very very profusely. So if would it go away if I were to cast a healing spell on myself? You don't know. Okay, well, <laughs> hmm. Rialma, your turn. God, would it go away? Um. Well, my thirty feet above, so my crossbow is definitely within range, and yeah. I'm still hiding. So yeah, minimum range for the crossbow is still thirty. Upward. Yeah. So I'm gonna. Oh, then yeah, you can definitely move just underneath him and shoot. Great, then that's what I'm gonna do. Do it. I will. Shoot him. I will shoot him. I promises, promises. Oh, that's a 20. I mean, Whoa. well, it's a 30, but yeah. This is it natural 20? Yes. No. All right, so you double the attack dice. That includes sneak attack. Holy mother. Which okay, you so get. you killed him. <laughs> well, oh my god. Wait, so you well, just like, remember, appeared behind this is, him? This I'm is rolling, gonna be halved still, so. I'm rolling 18, I think. Of 18 d6? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that checks out. Here okay. we go. So, yeah, it's still 18. 16 yeah. plus 2. Yeah. Um, okay, well, I'll just It's do as it. if you get sneak attack on two attacks, yeah. essentially. Jeebus. So are we counting that, by the way, because it, it's 1d6 plus 5 normally, so is that then 2d6 plus 10, or is it 2d6 plus 5? It's plus 5 for each attack still. Okay. The plus 5 doesn't get doubled. Okay. Yeah, okay. I mean, 18 dice. Holy God. <laughs> All right. Natural okay. 20s for rogues are really good. Hey! <laughs> she subs it up his, she appears out of his ass. We really have <laughs> rolled like beautifully or horribly. Yeah, it's yeah. really been completely all over the place. I've done terribly. 54. Wow. 54. But however, as you'd make the attack, it is not a full 54. <laughs> oh my gosh. He's not down, but he's very hurt. Because that was 27 damage, if I'm assuming if, if, correctly. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's right. He basically took 27. So he has... Where did you stab him? Yeah. Uh, well, you're underneath him. I think you know where you shot yeah, him. Yeah, in, oh. the, in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just right up there. Right, right. For, the, right for the third just, eye. Just Deadpool <laughs> style. Just yep. straight up. Just whoonk. Right up the butthole. Oh. So, just, <laughs> All right, oh, man, he's hurt. I, uh, he I wince as I see it. <laughs> uh, Albert Jones, uh, it's his turn. <laughs> Albert Jones is still on him. Wait, if I'm right, wait, do I can, do I have enough moves to like get out from underneath him in case this guy falls on top? Yeah, you can move if you okay, want. Yeah, great. you haven't you haven't moved that much. Thank you. I'm gonna say Albert Jones is gonna need to stay on him. If he, he's gonna need to maintain his grapple, sure, let's, sure. Let's just do that. Here we go. Because I mostly just don't want Albert Jones kill stealing you guys. Oh wow, he critted. That was a twenty. Jesus Christ. Burned that on Albert Jones. Well, yeah. Albert Jones is holding him tight. <laughs> just just tenderly. <laughs> Hold on for tenderly one more Tenderly in his day. hands. <laughs> um, uh, that means he has advantage because he's grappled. Uh, no, it doesn't, actually. No. I'm going to oh, say he can't do... He is hanging in midair. He can't grapple him and attack. Is he uh, holding yeah. on okay. loosely, but so not letting go? So, uh, That's why you need to knock them prone after you grapple them uh, to get the fair advantage. Enough, fair enough. Uh, well, he's going to then try to... Um, There's not it. much else he can do. He's basically just hanging on. Oh, okay. <laughs> fair enough. Uh, is old. All right, I'm gonna shoot him with my uh, my arrows. Alrighty, an oldie but a classic. Yeah, I got a longbow, and that is a twin nineteen. Nineteen hits. And so that's one d eight plus six. Yep. Uh, that is an ele- that's eleven damage. Did I kill it? No. <laughs> I got this. He's very badly hurt, but he's not down. 
Uh, Stu, are you up there with him in the oh, air? Oh, uh, no, but I have the boots of uh, stringing and spriting, which lets me jump. You mean uh, spriding and... Stri- uh, boots Stri- of jumping. Hang on. Striding and spring. There we go there eventually. Springing and striding. Yeah. Yeah, I can jump three times the, the normal distance. Jesus. So I think I can actually just jump Super up to Super Mario like style? Like, like Mario, what? yeah. <laughs> go ahead and make them the flesh check to see if you can grab him. Well, no, first I'm going to uh, throw a vicious mockery at him while I'm jumping. All right. Um, but... So I want him to make... I'll make my roll to jump, and he'll make his wisdom saving well, throw. Well, let's see what his wisdom save is. Yeah. He rolled an eight. Okay. He has no modifier. Okay, so he takes a three, d4, two, nine damage. Oh, stop your turn. Uh, five damage to you, by the way. Yeah, as you're continuing right. to bleed out. Um, all right, well, he had one hit point left, so go ahead and finish him. What do you say with your vicious mockery? <laughs> the last words he <laughs> hears in life as you make a psychic attack into his brain. Hey, demon guy, you suck. No, um, (laughs) no, really, you you must be able to do better than that. No, again, this is still, he's still thinking it through, as he's saying. (laughs) See, the problem is I've been uh, with the kids for so long, I'm trying not to swear in front of them, like I'm trying to be a better person. So You're still saying this and he gets bored and he dies of it. (laughs) His eyes just go bloodshot, all the vessels pop in his eyes, and he just, his wings drop. Uh, Albert Jones needs to make a dexterity saving throw. Oh man, he gets impaled on a horn. Oh, no, no, he's fallen thirty feet. Sixteen, <laughs> sixteen. Uh, he manages to roll out of the way and land on the in the ring, which is a little higher up. So he's not going to take. It's got and a bit of a bounce to yeah, it. Yeah, it's rubber. Yeah, exactly. He only takes four damage because he still fell pretty far, and the beast slams onto the ground, just cracking into the pavement. Uh, I'm going to cast cure wounds on myself. All right, that does knit closed the bleeding wound. Awesome. And you guys are out of initiative. Thanks for listening to this week's episode. We'll be back again next week with part two of our special Gormo side adventure. You can follow Hillary Levi on Twitter at Hillary Levi. You can follow Daniel on Twitter at L-O-T-R underscore Dan. You can follow Mike on Twitter at Super Geek Mike. You can also read his articles every Tuesday and Thursday on PartialArc.com. This episode included music by Kevin McLeod of Incomptech.com. You can find the track listing and credits in the show notes. Photos and character art can be found in the show notes on PartialArc.com. And while you're there, why not check out some of our other podcasts, including Because Comics, where Mike Christensen and I talk about the weird and wacky stories of comic books. If you have any questions about the show, you can email us at FridayNightQuests at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Tumblr, all under the handle Partial Arc. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the battlefield. Yeah, I'm going to loot the body. So how much experience do we get? Well, now we have a skeleton army, so that's pretty neat.